I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I end up pulling things off the shelves for random review because I'm kind of thinking of eBaying it. Once it's reviewed, I can do pretty much whatever I want to it. Repaint it, modify it, fix the joints, or in some cases, sell it outright. And sometimes that backfires because the toy I pull ends up being something I forgot how nice it actually was. So we're going to look at Movie Highbrow. This is from the Transformers 2010 toy line. This weird amalgamous time when there were movie toys, but they weren't attached to any movie, and they didn't have any other branding on the box other than Transformers. It's a little bit weird, so uh, it's kind of hard to describe what time period they came from other than 2010. So this is a World War II style... Uh, I want to say P-38 Lightning fighter jet. And this is absolutely cool. It's such a unique vehicle mode. Like, I don't... I, I, okay, I'm sure like at some point a Transformer came out in this. I kind of vaguely remember. Someone's going to correct me in the comments saying that. But definitely not a modern one. You know, and definitely not at this size. This is extremely cool, and it's so different from just your standard you know, uh, warthogs and, uh, all, and raptors and all these other kind of jets that they do all the time. It's a really cool looking vehicle, too. I've always dug this style of fighter. Very nice. Done up in a military green plastic. Of course it would be military green. And looking good all over. If we take a close-up look, you're going to see a lot of little rivet holes all over this thing. I mean, look at look at how many, look how many indents there are around there, all throughout, surrounding just about every one of the panel lines. It's an amazing job. Really gives it a heavy old engineering feel to it. Very, very solid stuff. We can take a look inside. There is a bit of a cockpit molded in. You can see a control panel in front and a bit of a seat in the back. It's a very cool job. Very cool. I like little details like that. It lends to the costume and the dis costume, the disguise of the vehicle mode itself. It's, and just makes the vehicle mode look all that much better by itself. And then we look toward the back and this unique tail fin is another one of the highlights here. There's a few hinges exposed here for the transformation, so it kind of subtracts from the look, but they still went all out. The rivet detailing still all over the place here. On the back fin, you're going to notice this little pretzel with spider legs. Apparently, this is a reference to the father-in-law of Hasbro's uh, lead designer at the time. Apparently, his call sign had something to do with spiders and pretzels. I have no idea what. Meanwhile, on the side, we have P plus 10, which to this day, I don't think anyone has actually figured out where that came from. You know, this was BotCon 2010. We found out about that. No clue on that one. But as you can see, all the way through, extremely well detailed. Then we get to the front of the vehicle where a lot of really nice things are done up. For instance, we have uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a copper color on these exposed engines here on top of the big rotors so that's going to come into play soon we've got missile batteries underneath as well as chain guns or mini guns mounted to the tops of the wings and a center point here at the front done up in silver excellent job all the way around and another thing i really like about this toy is you look to the underside, and yeah, the underside is almost this completely light blue color. I'm not entirely sure how accurate that is to the actual vehicle, because from what I know, this is mostly coming into play for robot, but they did make sure it's all painted through, so I don't know. What I'm more impressed with is just how clean this looks. I mean, of course, you can see some robot junk, but if I fold up the landing gear here, I'll go ahead and do that, you can see just how little undercarriage there is and just how well engineered the toy is. It looks very, very solid. And honestly, it'd be hard pressed to tell that this thing transformed into a robot unless you're really looking for the robot mode parts. All exceptionally well done. 
Now, of course, there is a bit of a gimmick to this. If I press these motors down, you do get the spinning propeller action going. Unfortunately, it's the kind of spinning motor that I really don't like. This little gearing system that stops when you stop. I much prefer the ones, uh, I think, I think Blazemaster had it. I think Cybertron Evac had it where pressing it in makes it continue. Like it, like that gives it the speed, but there's nothing stopping it once it starts spinning other than friction, gravity, etc. When it just noisy little motors like that that just stop, I, I think kind of takes away the effect. It's still neat, but I would prefer the other type. So that's how this go toy goes so far. I'm going to go ahead and remove the guns from the tops of the wings so we can get this guy into his proper robot mode. So yeah, uh, I will say right now, of course, it's movie inspired. Man, this is this was not a good time for me to have cut my my uh, fingernails because I'm going to need them here for a little for a few parts. I'm going to fold that up. Take these pits out. This is like pay attention to the transformation. You know, assuming I can keep the whole thing in frame for once, and you'll you're gonna see just how much was went into keeping the shell of this vehicle mode uh, intact, and really making it look as good as it could. It does a really good job. But, yeah, I'll prepare you right now. One of the things about this toy is uh, it's going to be you know it's named highbrow but don't expect it to look like the g1 bot you know so uh just brace yourself it ain't it ain't the most g1 accurate all right so i'm gonna get the legs into position i'm gonna have, i'm probably gonna have to consult uh probably gonna have to consult the uh the online instructions just to make sure i get those feet right so for now i'm going to continue into the main body of the jet pulling all of this mm, like all this down come on there we go all tabs in to the middle point there I rotate this mm -mm. now we're looking at the front of the robot mode so we can tell what we're doing here split all of that that all comes down here at the arms. We can mm. straighten everything out here. Get the fists out there. To the back. This all opens up, and this is where I wish I had my fingernails still. Because there's little tabs on top that let you pry this open. And I should be using them, but I have no nails, and I must pry Mm. And come on, come on. This is the part of the review where everything just drags, isn't it? I apologize for that. I'm trying, I'm trying, trying to get it all transformed. So open that up. All that comes down like so. Mm. The feet themselves are going to get kind of a clawed look between the folded up tail fins so raise at the ankle is that back piece which is where the feet are going to go all right so with that i believe i'm going to call that a finished robot mode just like so we have ah mm, stay together our movie verse highbrow who, of course, uh, looks absolutely nothing like the headmaster his name is taken from. Unfortunately, just a bit of a name dump. Let's just keep that trademark going, shall we? But overall, it's a really brilliantly done mode. This is one of those toys that does this weird transition from one solid color in vehicle mode to so many different colors in robot mode. And it's very, very nice, striking visual change. Gonna go ahead and look at the head, as of course we are prone to do to start off. It is definitely a movie-verse head. There is a lot of excess detail. There is a lot of humanoid features into it. A lot of extra grooves going on. But it's not a bad-looking head either. It's a little bit calmer 
than a lot of movie verse heads are, so I'll give it credit for that. See, the light blue that was on the underside is now the primary color here, which I guess lends to highbrow a little bit, but not terribly much. You see a lot more robotic detail going on as well. I do like how the landing gear here kind of works to break up the blue and give it some layering to the detailing. A little bit of red there, a little bit of black on the abdomen section, just to break things up a little bit again. The landing gear helping to add a little bit more color as we have mostly blue legs. The feet get a little bit weird. <laughs> like They had to fold up a lot just to make that uh, make that work, but hey, it actually kind of works, so I'm not going to argue it. I guess the claw and feet look is a, a little bit throw to the movie verse. Just, just a wee bit. So for the most part, he does look pretty good. He's got a good, uh, he's got, he's got a good proportion to him. A little bit thin in parts, but I definitely like the look of him. I like how he keeps the missiles at the hips, so he, the, he looks more heavily armed. And the blades are not like taking up his hand portions like they would on, say, Incinerator from the previous movie line. Also, as far as really cool details go, the front of the jet, uh, in front of the fighter, I should say, because it's not quite a jet, uh, there's a lot of hinging going on. There's a lot of little transformation parts to it, and this backpack itself has a few ways you can mount it, you know, because of all the extra hinging. I like to put it like that as a wing pack, and I think that's how the instructions really want you to do it, because at the bottom here, you have an extra thruster. So he does have a built-in flight mode of sorts just from how uh, just how, from how they handle the kibble. I think that's a really smart design choice. I think it really works for him. Unfortunately, he does not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. His arms do kind of get a little bit wonky since in order to accommodate this spin motor gimmick, the bulk has to get put to the side, which gives it this really weird angle where the arm comes down here and then goes diagonal across here. His arm looks a little bit broken. You can adjust this and bend his uh, transformation joints a little bit to help, but then you start causing gaps around the elbows, and now it's looking a little bit haggard again. Uh, there's... Not a whole lot of winning here. In a weird way, leaving it untransformed like that is kind of the best option. You also do have the option of just going full-on incinerator, folding everything outward and just leaving his hands as weapons of spinny death and or salad making. Your choice. I prefer to spinny death. But if you do that, you can't actually use his mini guns, which now mount into his robot mode hands. So, it's a little bit give and take, but hey, on the upside, this does mean he has distance weapons as well as melee as an option, and that's not a bad thing. Also, for a little bit of added feature, we can also lower down his flight mask, which very, very much changes up the look of his face. Now, this is where, uh, this is where I think they, I, okay, for a World War II style fighter i kind of get this this uh kind of works i'm not sure why a robot would need it but hey there it is there is some and there is some uh, clear light piping in the back of the head so the light does actually do a decent job of shining through i believe even through both sets of eyes which is fairly good design work for articulation we do have a rotation at the neck joint which is nice universal shoulders a little bit hindered by some of this vehicle mode cockpit, though I do like outward shoulder points like that, which you should know by now. Bicep swivel, an elbow that goes a little bit beyond the 90, and then we discussed all the optional hinges throughout the arms. Uh, we're dealing with no waist once again. Hips do have a universal jointage to them, and you'll find the hip skirts actually do raise outward, so you can get him into some better poses without that getting in the way. So we also have a thigh swivel, with knee joint, as well as an ankle tilt in all directions. You also have the option of individually moving those feet as well as a little bit of play in the foot itself 
there's actually quite a lot you could do with it if you really want to start uh, playing around with where all the parts go. So that's really good for posing. He does a pretty decent job of it. Um, I'm, mm, you see the joints are actually quite stiff on mine. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Nice action pose. You gonna stay? Yeah, you're gonna stay. So that was Hunt for the Decepticon slash 2010. It's kind of the same line. Highbrow. Very interesting, very unique as far as having a very different style of robot mode, very different and an even more different style of vehicle mode. He does have a few issues because uh, strange arms and such, but I think for the most part, his uniqueness more than makes up for it. The transformation's good. The fighter mode is outstanding. I like the little personal touches to real world vehicles and the real people who flew them, as well as all the little touches in the robot mode, like the flight goggles and the extra propeller arms as uh, optional weapons. There is a lot going on here, and there is a lot to like. If only because you really don't see Transformers take on such unique vehicles anymore. It's all just kind of left to very safe modern jets and cars, and it's nice to go old school every now and then.